It is known as the worst nuclear disaster in history, and its consequences are still felt several decades later. Hey everyone, and welcome to Science Illustrated. Today we're going to take a look at the terrible disaster involving the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. A disaster which rendered an enormous area uninhabitable due to the high levels of radiation. Also recently HBO launched a new short television series about the Chernobyl incident. It is a great show, I'm not being paid to say this by the way, but I can highly recommend you watching it if you would like to know even more about the catastrophe and the aftermath as well, both in terms of the scientific and political aspects of it. But for this episode on this channel, we're going to take a look at what really happened on that night in 1986 and take a quick look at the situation in and around Chernobyl today. But before we do, remember that if you like what we do here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to make sure that you don't miss out on a single video. And now, without further ado, let's get cracking. Before diving into that fateful night of the explosion, let's just take a closer look at Chernobyl before the disaster. More specifically, let's take a quick trip to the nearest town, Pripyat. Some 50,000 people lived in Pripyat, and the town was home to many of the people who worked at the power plant and their families as well. Founded in 1970, Pripyat soon became a model town for inspiration in the Soviet Union. All homes overlooked light, airy, green areas. The town boasted shopping centers, cinemas, cultural centers, restaurants, and it even had its own hospital. There were also numerous playgrounds, primary schools, upper secondary schools, swimming pools, and two sports stadiums. And if that weren't enough, a local amusement park was also being built, complete with a ferris wheel, bumper cars, and other rides. So it's fair to say that life in Pripyat, at least up to the night of the explosion, was good. But on the night of the 25th of April 1986, something went horribly wrong. A routine testing of the reactors at the nuclear power plant and a simultaneous experiment were to take place. This experiment would examine what would happen to the reactor following a loss of the main electrical power supply. But almost as soon as they started, the measuring instruments began to behave strangely, followed by shaking walls and a sharp rise in temperature in the reactor which couldn't be brought under control. Then at 1.24 am it happened. There was a huge explosion at the power plant, and shortly after, all the lights went out. The explosion at the power plant had occurred in Reactor 4, and the fire crew was called out to extinguish the fire. By the next morning, the fire on the roof had been extinguished, but the reactor was still burning, and the firefighters fought for nine whole days before the fire was finally out. But nobody knew then that the biggest danger from the explosion wasn't the fire, but the radiation which emanated from the power plant and was 400 times more potent than the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima, the first atomic bomb that the Americans dropped on Japan during World War II. Children and adults of Pripyat then awoke the next morning to what they thought was just another day. Only Chernobyl's employees started realizing that something was horribly wrong. However, life went on that day in Pripyat as if nothing had happened. According to news reports, only one man had lost his life and radiation was within normal levels. Of course, this was far from the truth. The Soviet government denied that anything had gone wrong and tried to keep the situation under wraps but the sheer magnitude of the radiation could not be completely concealed. Engineers at a power plant in Sweden reported an increase in reactivity levels and began suspecting something was wrong. And due to the wind coming in from the east, it was quite certain that the abnormally high radioactivity levels had to have come from either Ukraine or Russia. Still, it was not until the following day, which was one and a half day after the explosion, that the 50,000 inhabitants of Pripyat were evacuated, with no explanation whatsoever. Though clearly there was a very good reason for evacuating the people of Pripyat. While increased radiation had been measured as far away as Sweden and Denmark, 
in the vicinity of the town of Pripyat, the radiation from the damaged power plant was extreme. Many people have since died due to exposure to the high levels of radiation following the explosion. There is a lot of disagreement about the exact number, but we know that two people died as a direct result of the explosion, 29 people died in the hospital in the days following the accident due to exposure to massive radiation, and 15 children died due to thyroid cancer, which was directly caused by the radiation. These are the deaths that we are sure about. But then it starts to get tricky. Because what is uncertain is how many people have died so far and how many will die in the coming years due to the radiation they were exposed to at that time. A report was published in 2005 which states that 4,000 people have lost their lives as a result of the disaster. However, this report was solely based on the local populations in Russia, Ukraine and Belarus that were exposed to the most intense radiation. In fact, large parts of Europe were hit by radiation. It could, for example, be measured in Scandinavia. Further away you got, the weaker the radiation was, of course, but it was still spread over a vast area. And some researchers estimate that the total death toll could be somewhere between 30 and 60,000 if you count the whole of Europe. Today, wild animals and the few people who refuse to leave during the evacuation are the only inhabitants of Pripyat. But still, around 4,000 people still work at Chernobyl to secure the zone and to make sure that no more radiation is being released. The workers are not allowed to stay in the zone for too long, so they all carry a personal Geiger counter that shows how much radiation they're exposed to at all times. The area has also become something of a tourist attraction. A hostel has even been built to accommodate the tourists willing to tempt fate with a visit. However, the visitors are only allowed to make their way around the area at certain times. They mustn't sit down or touch anything due to the high levels of radiation. They must also sign an official waiver form to the effect that their visit is at their own risk and to relinquish any claim against the Ukrainian government should they become ill as a result of their visit. Also, all tourists are checked for radioactive particles before leaving the area. Right, that was a quick look at what happened back in April 1986 when Reactor 4 at the nuclear power plant Chernobyl exploded. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, if you would like to know even more about what happened back then, both in terms of the scientific and political aspects of it all, then I can highly recommend you watching the new TV series Chernobyl. I just watched it myself recently and it is genuinely a very, very good series. Of course, I hope you liked this video as well. If you did, smash that like button and of course, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to follow the channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.